everybody, thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about the plane. There's a really new cool tool that was literally just invented like about a month ago that I think is really cool and I've been using recently. It's something that Dr. Kwan has been using at his lab and I have a school coming up with Dr. Kwan that I'll tell you about later. It really got me excited. So what happened was I was watching Dr. Kwan's videos and then I saw him using like a couple different prototypes of this very strange looking bell thing. And then uh, Dr. Kwan got me in touch with this guy called Steven Erickson. And after like seven different prototype versions, this is the final thing. So this is called the Erickson bell. And what it is is Dr. Kwan for a while was always having people use a kettlebell, usually like eight to 12 pounds. And you would hold it under like this, like uh, with palms up. And he would have people swing the kettlebell but I don't think it was like translating to the golf swing as much as they want. And also there are some visual things. So Steven, who uh, talks to Dr. Kwan a lot, saw this and he's like a inventor and, and a carp carpenter and started making these different versions of different kind of like golf plane kettlebells with different grips and everything. And after trying out a lot of different things, I think there have been like maybe, I don't know, 10 different prototypes. This is the final one. It's called the Ericsson Bell. It's really cool. And I have the man with me here right now, Steven Erickson, joining us from Iowa. What have you created? What have you invented and why? What I've invented, it's a golf swing trainer with the intention of training motion first, which is different. So it makes motion the fundamental thing. What creates good motion in a golf swing, what a lot of people use, is they'll use something that's heavy because it makes your body sequence better naturally. So that's the fundamental thing. <laughs> It's heavy and it's going to create that motion. And then how would you create grip posture, how you hold your arms, um, how you conceive of where the plane of the golf swing is, and how do you control the face of the golf club? So all the parts about this, it's designed to put your arms just naturally in the right position, which is on top of your body. It puts it translates into a grip in your fingers. You would never grip this in your palms. It would be strange. So it puts the grip in your fingers, and then you quickly see where plane is. So most people would start swinging like this, because that's what we—that's a sort of a natural swinging motion. That's where the club wants to go. So it teaches you how to keep the face square to your path. So it's it, all those elements are sort of built on top of finding a fundamental motion. So that's the idea behind it. The best way to get this thing tracking back and forth on plane is you have to shift then turn. So Dr. Kwan calls that shurn. It's a mix of shift and turn where you go shift first and then push and the push becomes the turn like this. But you're centered so you don't you don't see it really. But that's exactly what's happening, especially if you look at the ground forces. When everybody picks this up for the first time, I've noticed because I've had it for a while, I had it at uh, our last golf school, people do this. And if you think of like the plane and you think of like a shark fin right here that would represent the face of the golf club like that, um, you can see about how consistent this and this would be, you know? You'd much rather keep this thing slicing through the air. Like just think of it like if you're in water, just aerodynamically or aquadynamically if you're in water, but just slicing through the air. Can you show us kind of like the, what is the fundamental uh, Erickson Bell drill, like the, the main thing that you do with it? Well, I think the most fundamental drill is to just kind of hold it and you don't even have to really grip it just let it kind of hang in your hands so just feel how this thing wants to swing and let your arms be very passive and then feel how your lower body wants to move to keep this thing going in this kind of small circular motion where you feel that little bit of like a hinge and fall yep direction so you get that little hinge and fall and switch over to a golf club and then you want to feel that same thing. You're just feeling that little fundamental motion that's driven by your body. The part that becomes tricky is then can you just do, do that same motion through the ball? Yeah, just do that motion and nothing extra. Nothing extra. Just do that motion through the ball. So. 
just like that. And at little, what feels like a sort of a 20, 30% motion will be like a, maybe a 70, 80% shot. Training with this, and even just looking at it, really shows you the super intimate connection between how you shift and, your, and the plane that you create. What almost everybody does, and it's like a huge problem, they turn off the ball and then they shift. And then they turn and then they shift. So a lot of times you see when they get back to about this position, this weight, this foot has not even gotten that much pressure in it and they're already here and then it's impact and then the foot goes down. Talk about how, how this kind of is a sequence tool and that sequence um, makes a good plane. Well, I, I think it's, it's, it's happening in two ways. Um, what I've noticed is, so part of it, because you have the visual reference, especially at this part of the swing, if you notice somebody does this, they know that's wrong, and that, but part of what's happening is they haven't braked properly, right? Yeah. And so in order to keep this thing going, you have to brake. If you want to keep that circle moving, you sort of have to brake properly. And in both directions, you have to brace against it, and you can't go... With a club, you can go faster than yeah. the club wants to fall, right? You right. can't go faster than this thing wants to fall. Right. So if people have this, Stephen, and I have one, give us yeah. some drills, some kind of flip-flop things that we can do, like kind of daily training that we can do with this to start building a better sequence and plane. Yep. Okay. So what I do, I think um, what I did, and I did it a little bit without this, and then this really enhanced my figuring this out, but um, you have, to, you have to basically sneak. It's like you have to sneak under your motor pattern. You have to... Because if, if you, well, you'll, you know, when you first pick it up, you try to apply your motor pattern to it, right? Yeah. And it fights you a bit. But I think you have to really, the thing about changing your swing is it has to, you have to go to zero and then just build this new thing off a different kind of pattern and a different kind of feel. So I think very small is actually... If you just start doing this, it's a little bit... Have you ever seen Ben Hogan's drill where he has his elbows to his side and he... Yeah, his Ed Sullivan drill. Yeah, it's very similar. Like, just just starting with this, very passive arms, and let your lower body start to go offset of your upper body, right? It's a very natural motion once you fall into it. That's why walking drills and things like that are so important. One, because you're shifting, you get planted, and then you're turning. Or if you do it in Alaska style and you do it backwards, the plane becomes really easy to make. Like it's not like a great mystery, like how you're gonna be real consistent and be on plane. If you have that out of order, where you're turning and then shifting, then the only thing you have available to you to make a good plane is uh, your hands and arms and to, to do something weird to get it and that's when it's like the consistency. Like some days you can uh, fight with yourself enough to get this on plane for just long enough to strike the ball. You were watching the Dr. Kwan videos and then you sent Dr. Kwan your like very fur, one of your first prototypes. So what is his involvement and reaction been to this, uh, to this device? Uh, yes, so the only reason I pursued it is because I sent it to Dr. Kwan just as a curiosity. Because mm -hmm. I was looking at his drills and I thought, well, I made this thing. And it's like your drill, but you can also see plane. And then he said, no, I really like it. Yeah, and he's been using it in the lab quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. and then there's the very, like I turned on his channel and it was like the next day, I just got this Ericsson Valley brought out and I was like, oh my God, there's my thing, like traveled across the country and there he is using it. And he's like, a, you know, a huge, I'm just some dude in Iowa, he's a huge expert. So he wrote back to me, he will be very busy. Yeah. Cool. His response. That just like struck me like, so he actually thinks this thing is pretty good. He thinks if it goes out in the world, people are going to want them. I saw, I thought maybe I should just get, this is like three months ago, like sending a clunky model to him. Okay. So I'm out on the range and the main drill that you do with the Ericsson bell is this, you swing it 10 times and then you hit some shots. It uh, sounds real simple, but the difficult part comes in doing what you do with this on the golf club. 
and not adding anything extra like Steven says. So let's just try that and go through and see how it works too. So the main thing that I'm gonna try to do is whatever miles per hour this thing is moving through here, at first, really challenge yourself to only hit balls at about that same miles per hour with then your club. So that would be about like this. Just about like that. And feel like you're real on plane and you're moving with the shift and turn is happening. I kind of quit in my swing right about here. And then I feel this thing dump past me. So I have to make sure to go this way and pull that way around the corner of it. This has shown me that my swing on the way through needs to be less like this and more like this feeling anyway. So then just try to hit some shots where you really feel like, okay, I'm not gonna add anything extra than what I did with that. If anything, it's a little smoother and slower. That's really good. Just hit some shots where you're feeling what you're doing in your body to make that kick point out in front of you. And for me, the big difference is this left shoulder has to go up and behind me this way on the way through the shot. Rather than just tilting this way, it has to go that way around the corner. And we can start to stretch it out a little bit, but nothing different you're doing with the Erickson bell. That's perfect. If we go a little bigger with this, big and slow, getting that momentum around the corner, and then we can hit it a little further. The main balance about hitting it further is that kind of got to creep up on impact and then reverse the energy rather from going target words now you're going you're actually pulling back this way and you can go a little further with that same feeling it's dead straight the same thing let's bring the trajectory down lower and to do that we're going to make our kick point even further forward and that is really going to compress it. We're going to turn this pitching wedge into like an eight iron. So we do that, boom. See the shoulder goes this way as it's then kicking it out there. I don't want to hold it, you know, retard the motion of this thing and hold it off that way. No, this thing is just loose and I am getting it kicking later by shifting my pivot and intention more that way that it's like a suitcase that's really heavy or like a car battery and you're pulling up on it like this. That's really good, dead straight. So to really shift and turn and stabilize the club face with a great plane, it's really a pivot powered motion here. That's really good. All right, so we'll have this at the upcoming be Better Golf School with Dr. Kwan. That's coming up on May 15th and 16th. If you would like to join us at the Windstar Golf Academy, an amazing, one of the best practice facilities in America, go to bebettergolf.net slash school and you'll see information about that. We'll have a bunch of these things there that we'll be using as well as a lot of other tools and just see like such amazing before and after results. Really great opportunity to work with Dr. Kwan in a really small setting, like uh, six people or less. So it's uh, for two days, and then we're gonna go play golf there as well. It's gonna be awesome. So send me a message, contact BeBetterGolf at gmail.com or go to BeBetterGolf.net slash school. If you guys are interested in getting the Erickson Bell, then go to the description of this video and you'll see uh, Steven's website. And there'll also be a link in the description to get a discount that I've talked to Steven and he's gonna get Be Better Golfers a discount on this. 
he makes all of them himself, so uh, we'll see what the interest level is like, but he's got some ready to go. So final thing, I'm gonna do another video with this about then going larger and bigger and hitting it further because you don't want to only swing on the functional swing plane. The functional swing plane is super important. It is the absolute foundation of everything you do, whether you're swing, swinging little chip shots or full on drives. But there's a way to then bridge it from just doing this to then hitting it hard and doing that. So that'll be in another video, but you gotta be subscribed to see it. So click the subscribe button. It really helps the channel and I really appreciate it. Okay, here we go. Final shot. Just be patient with it. Yeah, just like that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Click the subscribe button.